I'm Jonathan Katz Moses, and next in our essential skills for woodworking videos, we're gonna talk about woodworkers' least favorite subject, sanding. But I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks that I think will help you in speeding up your sanding and make sure you, that you do it more accurately. So we're gonna come in close here, we're gonna talk about the different kinds of sanders, different kinds of sandpaper, and how I get sanding done so that things stay flat and true. So here we go. When it comes to sanding, there's lots of different options that you have. You have your standard five inch random orbital sander, belt sanders, and then your oscillating spindle sanders. This one, uh, this rigid one, the reason you see it in so many shops is it comes with a belt and different size spindles, which makes it really, really economical for the price. They sell this at Home Depot, highly recommend this. This is a great machine. I use this all the time in my shop. Uh, but most, the thing that I use the most is my random orbital. And the reason that a random orbital is so much better than let's say a belt sander is one, it spins and vibrates, which means that, you know, when you have a piece of sandpaper, the grid is in a specific location. And with a belt sander, if you were to hold a belt sander in the exact same place, uh, it's going to create lines in your, whatever it is that you're sanding because all of that grid is going in the exact same location. Whereas a random orbital, that doesn't happen. One of the things that can happen if you skip grits with a random orbital is you'll get little, what they call pigtails in your work is those little round semicircles. And that happens because when you start with an 80 grit and then let's say you jump to 220, the sand on an 80 grit is so much bigger than 220 that it's impossible for that 220 to remove it. Which is why it's really important when you're sanding to start at a low grit and move your way up slowly. And so what I like to do is I buy uh, packages from Amazon where I get you know grits 80 through 800, although 800 and 400 on a random orbital just clogs up in about 10 seconds and it's pretty much unusable. But if you can get the multi-packs from 80 to let's say 320, you're gonna be really happy. For most finishes, you don't ever really need to sand past 180, uh, but sometimes I'll go to 220, which gives it a nice smooth finish. So uh, let's, let's come in close and I'll show you a little bit about sandpaper. So here's the sandpapers that I like to use in my shop. Here's your standard hook and loop sandpapers. Hook and loop refers to the Velcro on the back that sticks to your random orbital, just like that. And they come in different hole patterns, so just make sure you get the right hole pattern for your sander. When you're sanding with wood, you wanna be using aluminum oxide, and there's two different kinds. There's red and gold. The gold is a little bit more expensive. It has a rounder particle and tends to last a little bit longer. Uh, the red is less expensive. The, I use both. I don't think that it, I can really see a difference. Uh, the gold does last longer, but either way, the, the price difference is enough that, you know, some people would want to go with more red because you get a lot more pieces uh, or the gold, which lasts longer. I don't know that there's a benefit to either one. Uh, the other kind of sandpaper I use often is wet, dry sandpaper. This requires a lubricant while you're sanding and is going to be usually in very high grits. These are 1200, but you can get these in packages from 400 up to, I believe, 3000. And I'll put links to all the sandpapers I use down in the description. The other ones that I really like when I'm doing really fine sanding on like metal is this adhesive back stuff. Uh, or if I'm polishing chisels, this works great. It comes in a roll. You can just rip it off and stick it to anything that you want. The other one are these belts here. Um, the belts are great and one of the tricks that I love for sanding is get yourself one of these sandpaper erasers. And what it does is the rubber, it's just like an eraser for a pencil. When your sander's moving, you can just run it along and it'll get rid of a lot of the clogs. The other thing that should be noted, although it's not sandpaper, is a card scraper. These are great. Uh, and when you get into really tough grain situations or you wanna knock out all the lower grit sanding, a card scraper is great. The finish on a card scraper can be considered anything from like 150 to 180. So if that's the finish that you are looking for, this is a great option. One thing to know about finishes is if it is a finish that re-wets itself, like lacquer or anything that is denatured alcohol based like shellac, it's gonna re-wet itself, which means that it bonds by using the chemicals that are in the wet top coat to bond to the coat below it. So you don't need to sand as high with those finishes because the finish is gonna sort of melt into itself and it's gonna show off less of the imperfections in the wood that way. 
So when it comes to what sander I choose, my, my decision is based on whether I'm finishing or trying to remove material. With a belt sander, you're gonna get a much heavier material removal rate. And so if I'm trying to bring something down, like if I'm trying to flatten a slab, for example, and I don't have my router, I don't wanna set up a jig, uh, I can use a belt sander. But if I'm finishing, I use a random orbital. Now, if you already have a flat surface, there's a great way to make sure that that surface stays flat throughout the grits and you're not sanding more in one area or another. So come on in here and I'll show you how I do that. So when you're sanding, and this works great for whether you're trying to see if a piece is flat or if you know it's flat and you wanna make sure you're taking off the same amount. Now, this is a great example here where this chip is. This is gonna show you how I can tell if something's not flat. And I'm gonna show you my technique for sanding. So you'll see when I go over this area, the pencil on top will get removed, but it won't from where this chip is. And that's what's gonna show you that something's not flat. In addition, when you're sanding, you wanna go about an inch per second. So uh, going like this doesn't help anybody. And you'll see here that when the pencil is gone, you've completely sanded this surface to that grit and you can move up to the next grit. So let me give you that example. So you can see we've completely flattened out this surface. We know that we've taken off all of the pencil and you can see there's still pencil in here. It kind of compressed more than I wanted it to for this example, but the point being is that if there was still pencil left here, you can see there's, there's pencil left in here. You know you have a low spot in your material. That happens a lot of times in your first round of sanding, which is the most important part to get it flat. 80 grit's gonna take off a lot of material, but then after that, it's gonna remove much, much slower, so you're not gonna be changing the shape of your piece as much. So the same thing goes for a belt sander. When you're removing material, it's gonna go a lot faster, but that pencil line is gonna really help you tell when you've removed all of a surface area. Another great use for your belt sander is you can turn it over and put it in your vise and use it for shaping curves. Um, or taking off a lot of material all at once from things like brass, aluminum, things like that. And of course, this is a much better way to do that is with a oscill an oscillating spindle sander. And the reason they call it oscillating is because it goes up and down while it's moving. And what that's great for is what I talked about before where with a belt, if you're running it in the exact same place the whole time, you're gonna start to get lines and that keeps you from getting lines. The way this machine works, this, the spindles, which come in a variety of different sizes, uh, is for doing the inside of curves like I did in the memory box that I made for my brother for his wedding. And then a belt sander like this is for edge sanding and also doing kind of convex curves. And so this is a great machine, highly recommend it's only a couple hundred bucks. So that's basically everything I know about sanding and there's not much to it, but and I know it's not your favorite task, but it's one of those things that if you knew how to do it right, you just get through it really quickly. Let me know what else you'd like to see in these essential woodworking skills videos. I'm, I'm happy to do any tool that you guys suggest. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a great day, guys.